Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Yes. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Keep it up. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. What do you do? Glory, give him the glory. Hallelujah. Give him the glory. Great things he has done. Has the Lord done great things to you? Yes. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes. As we close this year, as we end this year, we want to end it strong. Amen. And I want us just sing a stanza of the song Bwana wa majeshi tunakuabudu. And I want us just to worship the Lord for a few minutes. And as we do that, I want you to, lef- to reflect. I'm from Central, so where there'll be a R and L mixing. Bear with me. Yeah. Bear with me. I want you to reflect on the goodness of God. If God has been good to you, watched over you, protected you, provided for you, you have a reason to give him praise. Amen. Amen. God can do everything. But there's something God cannot do. God cannot worship himself. Worship should come from us Amen. and ascend to him. Amen. And when we do that, heaven opens and responds to you. That's true. When the praises go up, his glory comes down. Amen. And when his glory comes down, that is why Caberia can say someone is being ministered to. Mm. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And in right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Bwana wa majeshi. Mungu wetu, tunakuabudu. Mungu wetu, tunakuabudu. Tunakuabudu. Bwana wa majeshi, tunakuinua.
try your name. Hallelujah. You are a good God. Yes. And you are good all the time. Thank you for your faithfulness. Yes, Father. In 2018. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for giving us life that we can celebrate your goodness this morning. I want you to give a shout of praise Amen. to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Yes, church. Yes, church. Amen. 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 While you're still standing, I want you to shake the hand of your neighbor or give him a high five. Tell him oh, how we are finishing strong. And it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's unfolding this week. Yes, the Lord is coming through. The Lord is coming through. It's a new season. Hallelujah. Lydia, give us Luke chapter 1. The text that we are sharing the word from. Luke chapter 1. From verse 11 to 38. The message for today is the silence is broken by the sound of the trumpet. The silence is broken by the sound of the trumpet. Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 38, the Bible says. I think we can read this together. Yeah? All right, let's go. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will, in the sight of the Lord, he never to take wine or other fermented drink and to be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to their wisdom of righteousness. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man. My wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Now you'll be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When the time of the service was complete, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and five months remained in seclusion. The Lord had done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. 
you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be a great, and you will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give, will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child at her old age. And she who said to be unable to conceive is in her six months. For no word from God will ever fail. Repeat again verse 37, please. Let's say it again. For no word from God will ever fail. Let's say it again. For no word of God will ever fail. Verse 38, finally. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Holy Spirit, have your way. As the bread of life is broken, our Father, we pray that your people will be encouraged, that your people will be moved by your spirit to the place of understanding the reason why you came. Father, I thank you. May you use me as a vessel and as a tool, even for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. You may now have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I want you to flip over the book of Malachi, the last chapter of the book of Malachi, so that you can get the perspective of the Christmas message. If you go to the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 5, verse 5 says, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the, the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So God desires, God desires not to, to cause destruction. God is a God of mercy. God is faithful. God is caring. God cares about you. God cares about me. And God cared about the children of Israel. He says there, he will turn the hearts of their parents. That's the ministry of Elijah. And that is John the Baptist, the coming of John the Baptist. He will turn the hearts of their parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So God was simply coming in to minister to his people lest destruction comes to them. Now, that was the message in the book of Malachi. When you flip over to the book, to the New Testament, yeah? By the way, you've just flipped over 400 years period. Between the Old and the New Testament, there is 400 period, they call it the period of silence. During this period, there was no prophet speaking. They say the 400 years of silence refers to a time between the Old and the New Testament, during which God did not speak to the Jewish people. The 400 years of silence began with a warning that closed the Old Testament. What you have just read, behold, I'm going to send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not smite the land with a curse. You will not be smart with a curse. You should have said amen for that. Yeah, because the Lord has already sent a message for you. The message of Christmas. That the curse and the penalty of death is not your portion, even in the name of Jesus. At that time of Malachi's warning, about 430 BC, the Jews had returned to Israel from Babylonian captivity as merchants. So they were returning as merchants and not returning as shepherds. 
The, the medio persian Empire still ruled Israel, and the temple had been rebuilt. I'm just trying to give you a, a perspective. Both the law and the priesthood of Aaron's line had been restored, and the Jews had given up their worship of idols. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Malachi's warning was not without cause. The, Jew, the, the Jewish people, listen to this, the Jewish people were mistreating their wives, marrying pagans, and not tithing. And the priests were neglecting the temple and not teaching the people the ways of God. In short, the Jews were not honoring God. This is not very different from today. That we might find ourselves like we were in this kind of scenario where our wives are being mistreated. And let us say also husbands, because also the husbands at some point get mistreated. Or haven't you read in the papers that uh, there are women from certain parts of this country that uh, butter their men? And uh, so during that time, it was not very different from now. Not very different. Yeah? Between the time of Malachi and the coming of the Messiah, several prophecies were fulfilled, including 2,300 days of discretion between 171 and 165 BC, the times of Daniel. What are we simply saying? That during this 400-year period, called in Scripture the period of silence, God had given the children of Israel this period of 400 years so that they would go back and reflect upon the goodness of God so that they will go back to prayer, so that they will go back to reading scripture, so that their hearts would be prepared for the coming of the Messiah. We are at such a place that we are, we are coming from Christmas into the new year. It's kind of a transitional time. And during this period, we, we want to be careful that even when we finish, we are finishing strong. The children of Israel were in such a place. And my prayer for us is that we shall take time and seek the face of the Lord, reflecting about the goodness of the Lord, even in the last few days of this year. Isaiah 55, from verse 9 to 11, I'd like media to give us that, Isaiah 55, 9, 9 to 11. Instead of the people waiting on the Lord during that period of 400 years, there was an emergence of a religious sect, the emergence of the Pharisees. You hear about Pharisees, you hear about Sadducees, you hear about teachers of the law, you hear about the Sanhedrin. This group of religious leaders who are leading the Jewish sects emerged during this period of 400 years. My prayer for us is that even during this period of transition, as we go into the new year, that we shall be sensitive to seek the face of the Lord as we enter into the new year, as we enter into the new season. So my prayer for us is that we shall be prepared. And as we prepare, Isaiah 55, from verse 9 to 11 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, and do not return without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that, it, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word. Let's read together this one. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The word of God must accomplish the purpose for which the Lord has released it. So I bring you the message this morning. The silence was broken by the sound of the trumpet. Because during this season of the month of December, what is the theme for this month? The divine trumpet. A time to worship. And the silence was broken by the sound of the trumpet. And our first point is that, that of the trumpet sound of salvation. During this season of waiting, with all this kind of a background, there was a setup in heaven. God was preparing his son. 
Jesus Christ, who will be clothed in a human form to come into the world and become the savior of the world. The trumpet sound of salvation. Give us Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23, so that we can be able also to capture the background from which uh, this point comes from. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. It is Jesus, the Messiah. You know, there are many people called Jesus, especially in uh, Southern America, in Brazil. But this is a different Jesus. Hello. Jesus, the Messiah, God's anointed one. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the, to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public, to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name, and you are to give him the name, and you Ah, to give him the name. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. The reason why Jesus came, the reason why Jesus was born was for the sole reason of your deliverance. Was for the sole reason of your deliverance. Yes, the Bible talks about us. For all have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. None of us qualifies to be in the presence of the Lord because all of us, not even one of us, is without sin. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 8, if we say we have no sin, we make him a liar. And the truth is not in us. And therefore we are all destined for destruction because of sin. When Adam fell, we all fell together with him. And sin was entrenched in the very core, in the very core of our lives. Therefore we were all instruments of wrath. Therefore our place was this place of destruction. Why? Because sin was entrenched in the very core of the human race. And therefore God introduced the sacrificial system so that through the sacrificial system the sins that we have committed would be atoned for. Hello? Are we together? So that from the book of Genesis going on up to the last book of the New Testament, of, of the Old Testament, there was a sacrificial system. Are we together? This sacrificial system was for the purposes of the atonement of sin. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. So we were naturally instruments of death. Naturally instruments of wrath. The wages of sin is death. So every soul that sins will die. But the writer says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The wages of sin is death. The result of sin is death. But God has packaged a gift. A gift that you do not deserve. A gift that I do not deserve. The gift of Jesus Christ, his son, packaged 
given to you. But when you believe in him, you have eternal life. The antidote for death, the gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Do you know him? Do you know him as your personal savior? Because at this point in time, the sacrificial system ended. Hello? The sacrificial system of the Old Testament ended because the Messiah has come. The one who would redeem the human race from the fallenness of sin. The writer of John says, the lamb who will take away the sin of the world was released. My brother and sister, if it were not for Jesus, where would you be? If it were not for Jesus, if the old system was still at work, I still wonder how many of us would be in a position to give the appropriate sacrifice for your sin. I'm trying to imagine that the Levitical sacrifice that was supposed to, give, to be given was a spotless lamb without blemish. Yeah? During this Christmas time, a lot of gods have suffered. Uh, and I'm sure if they would actually raise a voice, they would say, oh God, December is the time we really suffer. These people decide that we all have to be slaughtered. Hmm? God gave his one and only begotten son that through him there will be no more sacrifice to be given. Because when he died on the cross, he paid the ultimate price for your salvation. Amen? Acts chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says, Media, can you give us please? Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Talking about salvation. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. There is only one name. And that name is the name of Jesus. Have you received him? as your personal savior. As we get to the place of crossing over into the new year, my brother, my sister, the reason we come here every Sunday to share this message is to remind us about the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why Jesus came, that he may redeem you and redeem me from the punishment and penalty of sin. The second point, the trumpet sound of redemption. The trumpet sound of redemption. The word redeem means to buy out. The term was used specifically in reference to the purchase of a slave. The purchase of a slave's freedom. The application of this term to Christ's death on the cross is, is quite telling. If we are redeemed, then our prior condition was of slavery. God has purchased our freedom and we are no longer into bondage or in the bondage of sin. A place for you to say amen. That God has redeemed you. You are no longer a slave to sin. The sin that was had taken hold of you hmm, has no power over you. Why? Because Christ has redeemed us from the slavery and the bondage of sin. Related to the Christian concept of redemption is the word ransom. You hear of people being kidnapped. And when they are kidnapping, they are asking for a payment. And this is a payment for freedom. Jesus paid for you are ransom. Because sin had taken you captive. But Jesus paid for your ransom. The opposite is also true. 
when you don't accept him, when you don't believe in him, you are still in slavery. You are still in bondage. The bondage of sin, the slavery of sin, can only be broken by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Redemption is prominent theme through the Bible. God in his love and mercy is long-suffering, not willing that anyone should ultimately perish. God is full of mercy. God is full of compassion. We have not been faithful. We have not done what we ought to do. But because of his grace, because of his faithfulness, because of his mercy, we have not been consumed. God desires that we all come to this saving knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ, that we may be set free from the bondage of sin. I don't know what has been taken from you, but Jesus gave his life to buy you back. To buy you back. Amen. And he paid the ultimate price. That in the event there is anything that has taken you slavery, into slavery, if it is any curse within the family, if it is any condition, any addiction, because Jesus gave his life on the cross, you are no longer a slave. Probably you could be addicted, having maybe a form of addiction. Probably it is alcoholism. Huh? Or probably you are into drugs. Or probably into a relationship that isn't right. That has taken you captive. Jesus died on the cross to set you free. Freedom is your portion. Even in the name of Jesus. I declare no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall prosper. Because gave his one and only son for your sake. Yes. The story of our family. Our family we normally have this challenge. We normally have that challenge. We suffer from this condition. We suffer from that condition. We never break through to a certain level. We were born in poverty. That is not your portion. Jesus became a curse for your sake. That you may become a blessing. A wonderful time to just celebrate the goodness of God. Give me Galatians, Matthew, Mark chapter 10 verse 45. Mark, you, Mark chapter 10 verse 45. Just talking about Christ and what Christ has done for us. For even, can we read this together? For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus has paid the ultimate price. Therefore, if you are bound in any way, the name of Jesus is the name above every name that you break every curse, break every addiction, break every condition. Break every sickness and disease. The name of Jesus is bigger than any condition that we face. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Still being reminded about this redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. Galatians 3 from verse 13. The Bible says Christ redeems, redeemed us. Can we read this together? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. By becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hung on a pole. Hello. Jesus took every curse. Jesus took every curse. Yes, my curse is taken away. Hello. My curse is taken away. Jesus took it away for you. You are not supposed to live in that condition. Of a curse. Jesus took the curse away from you when he was nailed on the cross. The reason why 
Jesus came. Jesus paid the full penalty of sin for your redemption. You only need to appropriate this by faith in him. He has done it for you and for me. There is no curse. There is no cause for a curse in your life. Amen? Amen. And the, the third point, the trumpet sound of restoration. The biblical word for restoration is to receive back more than has been lost to the point where the final stage is greater than the original condition. I repeat, the biblical meaning of the word restoration is to receive back more than has been lost to the point where the final state is not like the way it was. It becomes greater because God is God. He doesn't just give you, he doesn't return you to the same condition. Eh? People in the insurance market, restitution. You are not returned to the same condition, but God returns you to a better condition. That is the restoration from God. Greater than the original condition. The main point is that someone or something is improved beyond measure. And like the ordinary dictionary meaning, Restoration, which is to return something back to its original condition, the, biblo, the biblical definition of the word has greater connotation that go beyond the typical everyday usage. Hello? This is a reason for you to celebrate that when God says he will restore you, he is taking you to a higher level than you were before. Repeat, repeatedly through the Bible, God blesses people for their faith and hardship by making up for their losses and giving their, them more than they previously had before. Hello? God gives you. Because he says in Ephesians 3.21 that I will give you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think according to his power that works within you. God desires to give you more, restore more than you can even ask, more than you can even imagine. He is the God of restoration. He's talking about a restored life. In 1 John 5, 11 and 12, the Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his turn. In John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The restoration of life. From death to life. Adam brought death. But through Christ, we have life. And life eternal. The restored fellowship. Remember in the book of Genesis, when Adam sinned and he was separated from God, because Christ came, he came to bring back the fellowship. In Matthew 18, 19, for where two or three come together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Because Jesus came, he came back to restore that relationship. The fellowship between you and God was restored. Dominion was also restored. In Luke 10, 18, the Bible says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, but I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome every power of the enemy. What have you lost during this season? What have you lost during this season? The Lord is saying this is your season, your season of restoration. I will restore everything that has been taken from you. Probably your marriage needs restoration. Probably your life needs restoration. You need to come back to the Lord. The Lord wishes to restore you. Probably your business is going down. He's the God of restoration and his desire is to restore you. There is no condition beyond God. There is no condition beyond God. There is nothing that God cannot do. And he desires to restore you. And finally, 
the trumpet of victory. There is a trumpet sound of victory. There is a trumpet sound of victory. Through Adam all die. Because when Adam fell in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that from that moment on, death came into the sin. For when you shall eat of this fruit, you shall indeed surely die. But Christ came that he may change the order of sin and bring the order of life. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. God has come that he may, he may make his dwelling amongst you. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with you. Hello? God is with us. God is in our midst. A reason to celebrate the victory of the Lord. God has given us with the victory through Christ. In Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11 God has given us the name that is above every name. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9. Shall we read this together? Therefore God exalted him to the higher place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Where? In heaven. And? And? Continue. And every? Acknowledge that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Everything we face in this world has a name. Everything. If it is a disease, that disease has a name. If it is a condition, a business condition, that condition has a name. If it is a condition within the family, that condition has a name. But we have a name that is above every name. The name that is above every condition. The name that is above every situation. And everything we face, every challenge you face, is an opportunity for God to manifest his power. I say again, every condition you face is an opportunity for God to manifest his power. Every name of God is the name of a condition. Come on, somebody. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Until you have reached a place of luck, you will not realize until you call on the Lord who is your provider. That is a condition. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. He's Jehovah Shalom, your peace. Until you have lost peace, you will realize there is the God of peace. Jehovah Shalom. It's a condition. When you are sick, there is a God who deals with sickness. He's Jehovah Rofeka, the Lord who heals me. Are you having a condition? There is a God who can deal with your condition. And there is no condition beyond him. Yeah? There is no condition beyond God. God is able to minister to it and to take it away because he's a faithful God. Because he's a faithful God. He says in Matthew, in, in, in Romans 8, 35 to 29, that we are more than conquerors. We are not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. In who? In Christ Jesus. Christ has conquered and he has conquered for you. Walk in the victory of the cross. Walk in the victory of Christ. Walk with your head held high because of the power of Jesus at work even in your midst. Victory is your portion. Even in the name of Jesus. Is there any condition? Is there any situation beyond God? I'd like Caberia to come and minister to us. 
in song. And as we allow God to speak to us, I would like to speak to this person who is here in this congregation this morning that has never given their life to Jesus. This is your opportunity. One thing that God will ask us when we leave this world, he will say, I gave you my son. What did you do with him? Every Sunday, we come to church. The center of our message is Jesus Christ. Have you received him as your personal savior? This is your opportunity. As Caberia leads us in worship, if you've not given your life to Jesus, feel free to come forward. Do not be ashamed. Just come. Just come. Caberia, please lead us. Feel free. Feel free to come. Feel free to Who come. Who can stand against Feel free to come. No one can. Feel free to come. No one will. Who can stand against a king? No one can. No one will. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to you.
by giving your life to Jesus. There is no one, one there more chance. Is no one, there is no one like you, Jesus. You do. every cross. Amen. Every cross is broken. Hallelujah. If there is any condition, there is no condition beyond the name of Jesus. To, to give, I want to give you a few minutes to mention that condition. Some businesses have been going through struggles this past year. Your marriage has been going through challenges this year. Your family has been going through a difficult time this year. Giving you a few minutes, a few minutes to call on that name of Jesus. There is a shifting, but you must pronounce it. Call on the name of Jesus to minister to that condition. Every curse is broken, every sickness, every oppression, Amen. every addiction. Amen. At the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, mention it, mention it, mention it. Mention it to him right now. Yes, while the door is open, this is your time to enter. Yes, bring it to him. Yes, Lord, we thank you that you are the God of restoration. You are restoring that marriage. You are restoring that marriage. Oh God, I pray. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That his husband will return back to his wife. Wherever he is, we call him back. Back to his marriage. In the name of Jesus, we cancel every addiction, every spirit of drunkenness, every yes. spirit of rebellion. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say you have no power over that marriage. Yes, Lord. Jesus is bringing that husband back. Bringing that husband back in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we speak your deliverance. Deliverance is your portion. Jesus died that he would deliver you from that oppression to set you free. Oh God, set your people free. We speak to that business which has been struggling. Oh God, our God, bring life to that business. Bring life to that business as we enter a new season. Holy Spirit of God, May your wind blow over that business. Oh God, may you restore it. Even in a much bigger way than it was before. Yes, yes, Father. Yes, Even Father. because you are a faithful God. Father, we thank you that you are pierced for our transgressions. The chastisement that brought us peace was upon you. 
and by your wounds, Jesus, we are healed. Yes, yes. Oh God, our God, we say you are in this world, and everywhere you went, you did good. Yes, Lord, yes. And we speak to that sickness. We tell it you have no place in the temple of God. Because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. Therefore, we say sickness and disease is not our portion. Yes, yes. Amen. So, Father, even in the name of Jesus, you are Jehovah Rophica, yes. the God who heals us. Oh God, would you move and touch those who are not feeling well here and outside by your power from the crown of their head to the tip of your feet. Holy Spirit, Spirit of creation, we align every part of the body now in obedience to the word of God. I will send forth my word and my word will heal you. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. It is your portion. Even in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the testimonies we are going to receive. Yes. Thank even Lord. because of your faithfulness. Thank you, Father. Take time now and worship the Lord. Take time and give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Blessed like that you came. Amen. Like Pastor Ambrose said, say, this is mine. I take it. And the devil can't do anything about it. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. This is how the Lord blesses you. He says, the Lord bless you. I say, the Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine on you. Amen. The Lord be gracious to you. Amen. I say, the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. 
if probably you have felt like the Lord had turned his face away from you, I say the Lord turned his face towards you. Amen. The Lord turned his face towards you Amen. and give you his peace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen.